Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com and today we're going to route our me onto some pine. Just to give you a little bit of background about this portrait, I actually took this photograph after I designed and cut this out. This is a full size uh, big wheel that I made while I lived in Perth, Australia. And I cut it using this machine here, using a tiling system, because it wasn't large enough to cut some of the pieces in one shot. Now the nice thing about this machine is I've had it for over 10 years, and I've never carved in my whole life with it. I've always just used it to make custom projects with. And so it's nice to finally come around to actually doing carving. Uh, the software has gotten a lot better. My 3D animation background really helps with a lot of aspects of doing this kind of stuff. And if you look in the portrait, you actually see right here is the CNC router that you see right here. So it's kind of neat that I use a CNC router to carve a CNC router out of. And now this design here, I actually did another version of it laser cut about a couple years later after I started CNCRI.com I would have moved back to North America. Now this portrait here actually ended up being in Make Magazine. Um, I was thinking about something to promote ShopBot because it's just an amazing tool and something to promote my business back then was CNC King. So I, I, I thought of an idea and I said well if I make something really cool which is of course uh, big wheels and I sent off the pictures and the text off to Make Magazine they should you know promote me somehow and that's exactly what happened they give me a full page completely for free in their magazine and this picture is on there so it's pretty cool what I'll do is I'll post a small picture of it here and you can actually see it on my home page at cncri.com you can see this exact picture from the magazine Let's take a look at the finished design right after the carving. As you can see here, it looks actually pretty neat, but it looks kind of hard to see on flat lighting. Now from the peak to the valley, it's about half an inch or around roughly 18 millimeters. So there's definitely some nice depth to this. And when you run your finger over it, 
it's really nice and smooth. So you can definitely feel the photograph uh, with your fingers. There's a little bit of fuzzies here and there that I'll fix up before I do the staining. And the reason for doing the staining is because what you want to do is have some pooling in the valleys and almost sand off where it's at the peaks. And that produces a lot of contrast. And for this project here, I'll just use a cherry stain. So again, as you see straight up, you can see a lot of really nice detail on this. Now the one screw up I do have is down here. And you can see it's almost a, a, a negative of what I was doing here. And what happened there is after I started cutting the file, I realized I could go a lot faster. I was making a lot of dust. When you have a CNC router, what you want to do is make a lot of chips, not dust. And the reason for that is you have a spinning bit and it's producing a lot of heat uh, from the friction of the cutting process. And if you're making dust, what you're doing is just keeping that heat there because the dust doesn't really hold much heat. But if you're carving out and you're throwing away, let's say, that wood that you're carving, all that heat goes on the wood and it goes away. So that means your bits uh, stay sharp for a lot longer and they last a lot longer. So after I realized what I did, I fixed up the file, I reversed what I did, and I finished up the rest of it. Now you'll notice also that there was two passes done. The first pass is just to remove a lot of material because the second pass with the smaller bit takes a very long time and you want to have that one go as fast as possible. So the first bit, what it did, it carved out any of the waste material out of here. And that was using a quarter inch mill. And then the second one was a ball nose 1 8 inch. Now if I want a more resolution on this as well, I can easily go to 1 16th uh, ball nose, but I don't have the patience for that. And at a distance, you really can't see much of a difference really. Can see what the portrait looks like after finishing it. It looks really really cool and again because it is a 2.5D effect as you can see here with the relief depending on the angle that you look at it it sort of changes a little bit on you. So unlike a flat photograph or a flat uh, laser carving you actually have some nice depth that you can also run your finger over and actually feel the photograph which is a pretty cool effect. Um, I've never had that feeling before and when I ran my fingers over it, I go, oh, this is really cool. As for resolution, um, this, this technology takes a very long time, which is one reason why I never got around to it. Uh, this thing here took almost two days to get done. Uh, if I were to do the same thing with the laser, uh, it wouldn't really work because I don't have a two-way feedback system regarding the depth. In this case here for the depth, the highest point is, to the lowest point is half an inch, or roughly 18 millimeters. So again, there's a very nice depth to it, and I really like the results that I was able to produce with my machine. Now the next step for me is to make a whole bunch more of these kind of things, not of my portrait of course, but just to make a whole bunch more of them, just because I really enjoy uh, working again into th the 3D environment and just producing really neat stuff. So if you're looking for custom carving, any size, any shape, any material. Of course, we have a full sheet machine that's, you know, eight times bigger than this one here in the shop as well. 
contact me at cncri.com. We can make custom 3D portraits for you.